protection provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Turnstone. More than furniture, we're an experience. Go to myturnstone.com slash twist to learn more and receive 10% off your first order. And by ShareFile for Citrix. Secure file transfer built for business. Visit sharefile.com, click on the microphone, and enter twist for a free 30-day trial. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Today on This Week in Startups, the winner of the Launch Festival in 2013 is here. Uh, Christoph Matthews, the founder of Boxbee. We're going to find out how he came up with the idea, um, how he won the festival, and what life has been like in the... Sixty days after winning Launch Festival 2013. Stick with us. It's going to be an amazing episode. You're going to learn a lot about launching and winning the Launch Festival. It's going to be a great episode. It's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Money is the root of all evil. Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey everybody, hey everybody, it's Jason Calacanis. This is This Week in Startups. You know the program, and you know what we do here. We talk to entrepreneurs, we talk to investors, angel investors, venture capitalists, we talk to founders, people who make products that change the world, people who create companies, people who try to put a dent in the universe, not the rice pickers in the field just filling bales with rice. No, the samurai who go out and who take the city and swords and fighting and just scratching and toothing and nailing for every inch to make something new in the world. If you are passive and you want to sit on the bench, if you don't want to be in the game, now's a great time to tune out. Click over here on YouTube and look at the most popular cat videos. However, if you would like to make a dent in the universe, if you would like to build that product that you've always wished existed in the world, then you need to listen to this show, This Week in Startups, every week, twice a week. This is your medicine. This is your training. This is like going to a personal trainer because I've done it a couple of times. I've angel invested in a bunch of companies. I know what I'm doing. But more importantly, I have access to the smartest people in the industry, and they come on the program and they tell you exactly how they became successful. They tell you exactly how to do it today and how it was done yesterday. And I can tell you, over 350 episodes of doing this program, I have learned so much myself. And I have had so many great entrepreneurs on here spill the beans and tell their secrets of how they do it, that without this program, I'd be half the entrepreneur I am today. And so many people come up to me in airports, at conferences, on the street here in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in New York, and say, hey, I listened to the program. I saw the interview with Naval, I saw the interview with Chris Saka, I saw the interview with David Hammer Hansen, I saw the interview with Brian Alvey, I saw the interview with George Zachary, right on down the line. And they say, I was inspired to start a company. And to me, that's the greatest thing ever. So if you see me in an airport, if you see me, you know, just you think like, hey, is that Jason? Like somebody saw me last night, I thought that was Jason. They just yell out, Jason. And then I turn around, we make eye contact, and you come over and say, hey, I'm a huge fan of the program, is my favorite guest. And that's the icebreaker. Don't be like that weird guy who like, just like looking at me at the corner of the eye for the whole time we're like at the urinals or in a bar. Just come up and say hi and let's talk about entrepreneurship. Let's talk about building these companies. You're part of a select group of people that you've even made it to this moment that you're listening to the program. Today's gonna be a great episode. As you guys know, in case it's your first time here, I've been doing the Launch Festival for six years now. Um, and we've had amazing companies launch. Companies like Yammer, companies like Dropbox, companies like Mint, companies like Fitbit, just the best companies in the world, Red Beacon, Room 77, Space Monkey, uh, Brilliant.org, formerly, um, well, anyway, Brilliant.org now. And this year at the Launch Festival, we had 5,800 people come, thousands of people in the audience, and 50 great companies on stage. One of those companies was Boxby. And we're going to hear today from the founder how they apply to the event, the drama, the pageantry, pageantry and how they actually won. Uh, all of that is coming right now 
uh, right after these important messages from our partners. Hey, everybody, what a great episode of This Week in Startups we're having. And we're having this great episode with the support of ShareFile by Citrix. This is a great program. It's sharing files designed for business. And you can send files of almost any size securely, access them from your computer or your mobile device. And we use it here um, at This Weekend and launch at all my companies. And the reason I love it is because you request files. So if you need a file from somebody, you can request it. They send it to you. They drop it into your um, share file. And here you can see the audit trail, all the different logs and who used it. And did they create URLs? Did they edit the files? Did they move the files? All those kind of great things. This really detailed... um, granular ability to control who edits and who uploads and who downloads and see this. And that's really important, especially when you're doing things like, hey, you're raising money and you've got your pitch deck in there and you want to see if people downloaded it or not. You have confidential financials, you know, mock-ups, all this kind of confidential stuff. You want to make sure it's secure and you want to make sure you know who's opening it and who's changing it, et cetera. And we do that here. Um, Get email alerts when somebody uploads or downloads a file. That's great because you're sitting there waiting. I wonder if the VC downloaded my business plan or not. I wonder if my sponsor or my advertiser or my partner uploaded that file. You instantly know and then you look responsive like you're on top of it, which is one of the great things about ShareFile. It's a super professional, made industrial strength for file sharing, secure file transfer, any size. Um, and so go ahead and visit sharefile.com and click on the radio microphone button. Yeah, visit sharefile.com. Do it right now and click the radio microphone button. Use the promo code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T. That stands for This Week in Startups. And there's no credit card required, and you'll get a 30-day free trial. That's great. So go ahead and go to sharefile.com, click the radio microphone button, and use the promo code TWIST. 30-day free trial. And hey, here's a great thing we did. We took uh, out of the 350 episodes we've had to date, we found the 10 best questions and answers on the program in those 350 episodes. We made a top 10. We made a video. You can get this video exclusively on ShareFile. All you have to do is sign up uh, at ShareFile.com by clicking the radio microphone button and using the promo code TWIST. Then you just sign up for ShareFile. um, Then you just... uh, send us a request a file link. So you request a file link to sharefile at launch.co. So you request a file link to sharefile at launch.co. That's super easy to do in the interface. And you will get this dropped into your share file. Then you can look at it from your phone or from your desktop anywhere. You have that file. You have that great top 10 questions. Thank you so much to ShareFile for supporting independent media like This Week in Startups. We couldn't do it without you. And what a great product. We use it here. Everybody loves it. Thanks so much at ShareFile by at Citrix. Go ahead and tweet that. They love to hear from you. Let's get back to the program. Okay, everybody. Thanks uh, for tuning in, and thanks to our partner there for supporting independent media like This Week in Startup. Not easy to do this show. We're up here at WeWork in San Francisco. Brandis is here with me uh, on the uh, one and two camera there and the microphones, uh, making sure we have perfect fidelity and sound and video for you guys. Uh, out there on YouTube or in TuneIn or Stitcher or however you listen to the show. Probably even iTunes, that terrible podcasting app. they got to fix that. Um, so listen, I, when I met Christoph Matthews uh, during the process of um, rehearsals for the launch festival and um, during the application process, and we have over 500 people apply, I don't remember exactly how I met him, but I do know I went immediately when I met the founder and I met uh, and I saw the product and the concept, I thought... Yeah, he might win. Uh, and I told him that. And he wound up winning uh, the Launch Festival, which was a pretty competitive uh, class of companies this year. Uh, Ad Stage as well was in there and a bunch of other great companies. So um, welcome to the program, Christoph. Matthews. Thank you for the nice introduction, Jason. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you applied to the Launch Festival or somebody told me about what you were doing. How did, how did you wind up on the applying or just getting accepted to a launch festival? I can't remember. You know, I, I just remember getting a message from AngelList uh, from you, in fact, and uh, I wasn't so familiar ah, with you at the time. Right. And I'm not sure if you, you just found Boxby through AngelList or Naval had a convo with you. Naval, a founder of Boxby. A uh, founder uh, of AngelList. AngelList yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, he, he, you met him at some point and he featured you? Uh, no, we just we just had a short convo uh, mm-hmm. through AngelList. Ah. It's pretty brief, yeah. And so yeah. you put your startup on AngelList, mm-hmm. and what happened next? You started well, getting followers, or people interested? Yeah, just a few followers at first. Um, I, I had been pretty new to AngelList, and uh, just got a, like a trickling of followers, and then um, I started 
you know, adding people to the list and uh, just got more and more followers. And then AngelList soon found out about about uh, Boxby and they were really intrigued by the idea. They wanted to know about our traction. They realized we, we had a lot actually going in and they decided to to feature us pretty soon if we could get those traction numbers up. And uh, while that was going on, I think I got the message from you right. and launched just to really accelerated things. Yeah. So um, tell us, what is the idea for Boxby? Boxby really is cloud storage, but for your physical things. Mm. So it's Dropbox for the real world. I guess you could put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're leveraging the cloud storage meme. Uh, so what does that mean? It's, it's, how does it work? So it's how, funny you mentioned that because I think when I was on stage, uh, one of the judges was actually confused. They took it a little bit too literally and said, like, so are you like vaporizing the boxes and like 3D scanning them and then printing them on the other end or, yeah. <laughs> or something? <laughs> who <laughs> so was that? Was that Greg from Tagged or something? I remember it was uh, could have been. I, I don't want to name names. I don't remember who it was. Yeah, we'll um, pull the video. But it, it, it was funny. Uh, so, no, actually what it means is that we, we provide pickup, storage, and delivery all from an easy web slash mobile interface. Like if you have too much clutter in your home, uh, like you have some winter coats and boots you don't need in the spring, uh, you, you just press a few buttons and then we're there within a few hours to pick up your things and everything can be categorized and inventoried so that if you want those winter coats and your boots come November or July if you're in San Francisco, you just click on those things and they come right back to your home or wherever you are in the world. So. How did people do this before you could just click on your phone and have a box brought to your house, put your garbage and junk in it, your stuff, <laughs> or your very important stuff, and have it stored somewhere? How did people do it previously? I mean, who are you, who are you competing against? Well, uh, it's, it's typically with self-storage. Hmm. Uh, there, there's self-storage, and then there's what's called mobile storage, like pods and these, uh, these types of companies where they bring, they bring a storage unit on a semi and, and put it in front of your, your oh, front God, door. Oh, God, I hate those things. <laughs> Yeah, we get those in LA once in a while, and they're just really like, yeah, and they stay for a week or two. They're disgusting. So, what do people yeah. do? They just pile their stuff into those, and then they get taken yeah. where? Well, who knows where? They don't. Yeah. They don't tell you. They have places all over the place, but it's it's really time consuming. You have to get a permit from the city government. Ah. Uh, it's expensive. Like, what if you just want to store a few things, but they bring mm. this giant heaping unit to your door? Right. You know? So, if I had, let's say, a backup hard drive, and printouts of all my photos and some old t-shirts that I had from when I was a kid. And I just said, you know, I'm, I don't want to keep these in the house, but I just want to have them off site. So in case the house burns down, mm -hmm. what would it cost me to have you pick that box up? Let's just call it a, what's a standard size box? Like I'm making uh, it's my like 18 by 18 by 18. Okay. So foot like and that. a half yeah. all around cube. Mm -hmm. I fill it with a couple of hard drives and a couple of things and it weighs whatever, 10 pounds or 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. How much does that cost to get it out of my house and into storage? With one of those, it's it's um, in the high 200s, if not like $300, not including a fuel surcharge. Oh, you're talking about the pod? Uh, uh, yeah, the pod oh, per yeah. month. And the delivery is like $100 each way. Ah. Uh, I mean, you so could go to a storage you could, you unit and fill pay less, but it's still a lot. Yeah. yeah. So what does Boxby cost if I wanted to just have that 18-inch all-around cubed, you know, backup? Well, the pickup is free, and it's $3 a month for our smallest box size. Wow. So that yeah. means you make 36, it's $36 a year for me to store a box or yeah. something to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, but you pick it up and you drop it off and that's got to cost you 10 bucks each way or something. So how do you make money then? Um, is in this, or is it like I have to keep it in storage for over a certain number of months for it to make sense for you guys or? Uh, just like one month, I uh -huh. would say is our minimum. And we, we make money because people store things for a very long time. Ah. Uh, some some elect to have their things retrieved uh, once a month, maybe mm. three times a month, and they they pay for the subsequent deliveries and pickups, mm. right? Uh, but the the real money is made in the storage. Got it. Yeah. And so you came up with this idea. How? I mean, what was the what was the inspiration for the idea? Did you get in an Uber one day and say, God, this would be better if I Uberfied my <laughs> Storage, you know, unit. Like, why Uber's is storage really, so painful? Uber is really nice, and at the time when I when I started, it was before they had the cab, so it was yeah. I, I only used the town car, and that was a really luxurious experience. So I don't think that would inspire me to do something like storage, which is the right. exact opposite end of the spectrum. Right. But um, w what happened really was I stole the idea from my parents. Ah. <laughs> my 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 mom is from Thailand, and uh -huh. uh, my she decided to move back to Thailand, and my whole family moved uh, there along with her. And I go there every year to to visit them during Thanksgiving, and uh, all the family stuff comes out, and yeah. and um, they they had their their rants and their complaints, and one of the complaints was, God, I have to buy 
two or three flight tickets every year to go to California where our storage units are just to retrieve a few items and mm. then fly back. So obviously that gets really expensive and um, I, I was working on my laptop at the time and I was using Dropbox just moving files back and forth. Mm. And then the idea just hit me like, wow, in Silicon Valley there's just this, this rave and this, this hubbub about cloud storage. Mm. But why hasn't anyone extended that to the physical world? Why, why can't your items just follow you wherever you go? And, and why shouldn't you be able to manipulate and organize your items however you want to virtually? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tell us about the, the launch festival and that experience. So you got accepted. Obviously, I thought the idea was great. I accepted it on the spot. Um, and so sometimes I find uh, folks on AngelList or somebody whispers in my ear to check this out. So that was the case here. I found out about it on AngelList. Mm -hmm. I remember now. I, a lot of times I'll go on AngelList and I'll just look at the newest mm -hmm. things. And when I see a logo I like or a name I mm -hmm. like, because I'm kind of a branding guy, and I saw <laughs> the name, I remember Boxby, and it was a B and yellow, and it stood out. And I was like, that's a pretty good design. So I checked it out. But um, after you got accepted, take people through what the process is and, and how it works and you know, what was it like just getting on that stage you know, finally. Oh, great, yeah. Well, I, I met your associate and your editor in chief, Karine, yeah. um, Kirin, sorry. Yeah, Kirin. Uh, yeah. Here in San Francisco, and went through an initial interview in person, and she really liked the idea. But then she told me as I was walking out, like, so you don't have any press, right? I said, well, not not yet. And she yeah. says, well, make sure you're not talking to any press, and take your website down, and do yeah. all this stuff. And I was really, you know, I was excited, but then I was really reluctant to right. to continue with the launch thing, to be honest with you. Yeah. And but then. Uh, for some reason, I just trusted my gut and decided to go with it. Like, fine, I'll take my website down and put a splash page on there. Yeah. Uh, this this might pay off. And uh, over the course of about two two months or so, we had a series of rehearsals. I think you and I met maybe three or four times yeah. uh, during that period. And it was nice to work with your partner, Tyler, uh, yeah. the, the speaking coach and, mm -hmm. and uh, producer. He was um, he was amazing in uh, really dissecting the, the core of Boxby and turning that into some wow moments for the audience. Uh, really coached me on speaking and delivering the idea and the message. And um, then we went, to, we went down to Sequoia a few times to rehearse it and, and uh, you, you slashed and burned <laughs> a few <laughs> things in the presentation a couple of times, uh, but it, it really came together quite nicely. And um, uh, I really think it delivered well on stage. So yeah. take me through the rehearsals. I mean, mm -hmm. you, First, you had to make that leap of faith that I'm going to launch it at the event on stage, and so I'm going to give up the press for whatever, six, eight weeks mm -hmm. that you would have gotten. Um, and just so people know, for background, the reason we do that is we want it to be new on stage so that the press and everybody shows up and there's a sense of excitement. Mm -hmm. um, so you take that leap of faith, you put everything behind a, a launch wall, you start collecting emails, mm -hmm. so you don't you keep it stealth. But let's talk about those rehearsals. What did you learn from the rehearsals? What were the key things that Tyler, who is our... Um, coach uh, and our pitch doctor who comes in and myself and Kieran just what was and watching the other because you got to watch some other people right it was mm -hmm. group rehearsals so right. you do four rehearsals what was the what were the takeaways for you what did you learn from that process from other people from Tyler yeah great question so I learned something that I try to tell every other entrepreneur that I come across who's like trying to get their product out there off the ground and that is like know how to talk about your product. Mm. Like learn learn how to say it in as few words as possible so that people just get it. Mm. And a lot of times that means showing the product rather than talking about it. Right. And I think that's something that you harped on a lot and, and Tyler did as well. Like it's not enough to have mock-ups, it's not enough to have a bulleted a bullet point list of what your product does and all the features. You you need to craft a story uh, which represents your use case and then show them how that works, whether it's like uh, bring up your iPhone or like going through a web screencast, whatever it is, right. they need to see it. Yeah, and you yeah. told a really great story, if I remember correctly, um, it was a couple that was going on vacation and they wanted to put some things in storage and they were dealing with all the problems of the pod or having to drive there and it got so much simpler and they saved so much time and then the dinner party. So you really showed a couple of use cases and mm -hmm. exactly how easy it was to use the product. Mm -hmm. uh, showing, not telling, obviously, picture worth a thousand words. And yeah. So you get on stage and you walk up those steps, you get the bright lights on you. What's it like when you look out and you see thousands of people there ready to hear in the next five minutes what you've worked on for six months? I think it's different for someone like me who's an introvert and yeah. someone like 
you perhaps yeah. who's an ex extrovert, right? Yeah. Um, for for me, the, those people all become a blur, and instead of ah. my focus um, being on them, it's kind of just like my myself and what I'm trying to say. Ah. Uh, it just it just feels a lot more comfortable that way. And um, and you deliberately to, do that. You deliberately become introspective. Because of your introverted nature, you feel more comfortable with that? Yeah, I, I don't think it's deliberate. I think it's yeah. just an auto response, really. Ah, yeah. And um, I was surprised at that, actually. I took notice of that because the the couple of weeks leading up to the event, I was pretty nervous about <laughs> going up there, to be honest. Yeah. And I, I think I voiced some of the yeah. opinions to you. Uh, but uh, about, you know, from an hour before I went on stage until I walked to those steps, it was just like zen. Yeah, you were very zen, and I think... Do you think the practice and being in group practice was a big part of sort of getting you through that? I think you know, that sort of zenness. Yeah, I think I think it was three things. The group practice was one thing, like preparedness definitely helps. Uh, the second one was tired of being tired, ah. <laughs> or tired of being nervous rather. Right. And uh, the the third thing is like knowing that there's people out there in the audience that are totally rooting for you, knowing that uh, you and your team uh, are are really excited about you going ah. on stage. That's really great. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you give the presentation, and you get a tremendous response from the judges. Mm -hmm. um, what was that feeling like when you, you know, sort of get to the end of the presentation and you're starting to get really unanimous? Uh, and I think I asked the audience who would use this and everybody raised their hand at some point. And yeah, that was a pretty risky move. I, I <laughs> was worried that you did that, but then the response actually turned out really good. I wouldn't yeah. have done it unless I yeah. knew. <laughs> I was keeping statistics on it because yeah. I had asked everybody in the rehearsals yeah. if they would use it. And mm -hmm. so when everybody raised their hand in rehearsal, I knew there's no chance in a big audience <laughs> like that that it wouldn't be a similar one. Right. So... No, I didn't think it was any risk, <laughs> but it could have been, I guess. <laughs> Everybody, how many people use this product? Like three people raise their hand. It could be Crickets. pretty deadly. Yeah. Um, so you, did you know at that point that you had really a good shot of winning it or that you had won the crowd? And, you know, that there, was that like the va ultimate validation for you and your idea, you think? Um, I, I suppose the emotion that I felt right after going off stage was more like... I did it. I, I did what I came out there to do. There, there were months of preparation that yeah. went into that, uh, months of work with you guys, and I did what I was there to do. And afterward, I got a really good response from people backstage. Um, actually, had people coming over and throwing money. Really, <laughs> I mean, more than I've ever seen in my life. Um, wow, it was, it was quite amazing. So tell me about that. I mean, yeah. you have to say who, but you literally had investors come and just say, what. <laughs> yeah, they would they would throw some amounts like uh, X million dollars. Of what would you do with that today? Or really? Something. What was, was the largest number that was thrown at you? Um, I, I would say two million. So I, I did just not an investor it. came up yeah. and just said, "If I gave you two million, what would you do with it?" Yeah, there were there were some uh, wealth funds from overseas that came yes. over, and they they invest uh, kind of fast, as as right. I learned. <laughs> right, they <laughs> so want to just neat. immediately get that mm -hmm. those shares in an mm -hmm. early stage company. Right. So um, then. What day did you go on? One, two, or three? The first day? Uh, I think day? it was on the, the middle day, Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to talk about after we get back from the break is what happens after you get off stage and how do you leverage that momentum into getting in an accelerator, raising money, getting team members, getting email addresses of people who might use your product right, right after we get back from this important message from our partners who make this very show possible. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. What a great episode of this week's In Startups did I say this week's in startups? This week in startups. What a great episode we're having. And it's brought to you today by our friends at Turnstone. That's right. My Turnstone is the furniture I use here. It's the desk I'm using right now, this gorgeous, beautiful desk you see in front of you. You can probably do the side view. I don't know if you've got a side camera set up. But I love this. This is a tall stand-up desk. So when I'm working, I use this, my Turnstone. I kick the chair out that I have here. And I just stand up. You know, you heard about this thing where standing up is great for you. So I'm sitting, uh, not sitting, I'm standing, and I have two or three of my lieutenants. We're all talking. We've got our laptops. I love the My Turnstone uh, collection. Take a look at how beautiful this is. Pull up my screen, please, Brandis, if you will. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. The great bookcase, the great desks. If you look to the side on the left there, you see that little nook. And when you set up these big, beautiful desks, you see everybody spread out. And you notice that how like everybody's spread out in these photos, really having a great time uh, doing their work, like these two women at their desks. They got plenty of room. There's cable management in the back there. It's just really great furniture, um, and it really sets a tone. Here you see this beautiful little caddy here to put your laptop on, the beautiful integrated 
uh, orange couch there and the planter. Um, you got the monitors on arms. All this kind of stuff is gorgeous. And see, this dude's got next to him the yellow couch. It creates a certain tone, and it motivates employees to come to work every day and feel like they're just appreciated and they enjoy these sort of casual settings. And that's what business is becoming. It's becoming more like a dorm room, more like hanging out, having a great time. And um, my turnstone just sets this like sort of great professional yet casual environment. That's how I would call it. Sort of like dress casual. You know, somebody wears a blazer and jeans, and it's like, okay, they look smart up top, but they got the casual jeans down below. That's like my turnstone to me. It's like, okay, there's a couch over here, and we can riff at the couch, or we can walk over to this, you know, stand-up desk and do a stand-up meeting, do a scrum meeting, whatever it is. The developers use it. The designers use it. Everybody has a great time. Go to myturnstone.com slash twist. Myturnstone.com slash twist, and you'll get 10% off your first order. Now, listen. 10%, 10%, you're thinking, hey, 10%, okay, that's nice. This is on a physical product. It's not 10% off software, which would be a gracious thing to do. This is 10% off of a hardware product. So this is extremely nice and generous of my turnstone. So everybody go ahead and thank at my turnstone, thank at my turnstone, thank at my turnstone on your Twitter account. Really a great team up there making simple and smart furniture solutions for small businesses and startups. My turnstone is only for startups and small businesses. I mean, I guess if you had a big company, you could buy it too. And it's a great deal. The value for dollar is extraordinary. And I love the fact that the power is integrated. So you can't see this on my desk here. But if they could move the cameras, you'd see there's like pop-up power at the edge. So you just you push a little button, it pops up. And then you can click it back down. So like you feel like, oh, this is really well designed. But it's not at an outrageous price. To get that kind of functionality previously would cost tens of thousands. This is hundreds of dollars, low thousands of dollars. Okay, so when you're thinking about how much it's going to cost, we're talking a, a very respectable uh, price. Not cheap like some of those, you know, prefab things that you have to put together yourself and they always wind up breaking. It's not cheap. But it's also not absurdly expensive that your VCs and your angel investors are going to say, hey, knucklehead, what are you doing? Don't waste my money. It's right in between. Just the perfect price, a couple hundred dollars per workstation. Maybe you top out a thousand if you get all the stuff. I love it. And I'm a cheap bastard. You guys know that. I'm not going to waste money in my startup. But I do think that investing and having a beautiful environment is absolutely critical to setting a tone and having people enjoy their workplace because they might work 10, 12 hours a day there. They might be there six days a week like poor Brandis. Well, I'm just working really hard right now. All right, listen. I could talk all day long about my turnstone. I love my turnstone. And this 10% offer, I am so grateful to them. MyTurnstone.com slash twist. 10% off your first order. Let's get back to this amazing program. Thank you. Okay, everybody, welcome back, uh, and thank you to our partners for sponsoring the program. Um, when we left off, Christoph Matthews, uh, who is Christoph M. on Twitter, K-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-M on Twitter, you should follow him, uh, is the founder of Boxby, B-O-X-B-E-E. Is that, are you at Boxby on Twitter, too? Yeah, we just got the Twitter handle. Oh, they very good. copyright. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yes. So you just send in your copyright notice. I own this. Please give it back. <laughs> uh, so you got Boxby on yeah. Twitter. Everybody follow that. Um, so when we left our hero, that would be you, uh, Christoph, um, you had successfully launched millions of dollars being thrown at you by sovereign wealth funds, and you realize you got a hit on your hand because when we asked thousands of people in the audience if they'd use the product, you got almost everybody to raise their hand. You know you got a hit. What do you do then? What, what, how do you leverage the next day and a half between the second day of the three-day festival when you launch to getting, um, what, what are those next whatever, 36 hours like until the award ceremony? What do you try to accomplish? I, I wanted to learn as much as I could about the, the climate of, of Silicon Valley at that event. Mm-hmm. Um, you had everyone there. Uh, everyone who's a who's who in Silicon Valley was there and uh, people flew in from all over the world if there's one event in tech yeah. uh, that, that you should pay attention to it's probably launch yeah. and uh, I, I just wanted to learn as much as I could about the investment climate there like what's hiring like what's uh, which uh, types of startups are successful which aren't who should I get to know and uh, the the various dinners that that launch had um, arranged for the founders was certainly helpful in that respect mm. uh, just being able to walk around uh, this massive conference center with with all these companies there uh, give a good sense for what's out there. Mm. Talk about the dinners a little bit and what what they were like and, and you, who you met and how that worked. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking there were there were two dinners. There was the angel dinner the first night and the then Sunday night was, the night before. Yeah, we have the yeah. angel dinner, which is 60, 70 angels and forty five founders. There. Okay. One. And what was the other dinner? Then the Monday oh. night is the Yammer founder party. Okay, that's yeah. right. Tuesday is party. your own dinner, do what you want, and then Wednesday was the winner's dinner. 
Right. So, which was my favorite because of the place we were at. <laughs> five A five Steakhouse. Yeah. So it's oh, pretty beautiful. amazing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we had an amazing dinner that night, and each of the just for people, people know at the end the winners. And there's about a dozen companies that win different awards. Those dozen companies each get their own table at 5A5 Steakhouse, and we sit other investors with them. So at the start of the event, the pre, the angel dinner that Naval hosts from AngelList on Sunday, you get to meet 65 angels, but then you get like really great people to sit at your table and have a steak dinner uh, at 5A5. So award ceremony comes around, you're in the audience, and you're seeing the awards tick away. How confident were you? What do you think your chances were of winning an award, let alone winning the festival? Uh, I don't. I don't know if I can attribute a number to to the chances. <laughs> I. Um, I felt. Well, what would your, what your team really, think? Yeah. The the team. Yeah. Uh, they're always behind me. I, yeah. I, <laughs> they're were biased. they confident that you'd but win an they, award? They, they were. They were pretty confident about it. Mm -hmm. uh, they. They. They thought I would win at least one of the awards. Yeah. And um, I. I on the other hand, you know, I was, I was feeling great when I walked off stage for after the presentation, but uh, there were some bullets <laughs> going yeah. on. I, I don't know if that was on purpose or not. That one hour delay for the uh, <laughs> oh, in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't remember. There, uh, no, for the uh, the award ceremony, I guess it was a heated. Oh, discussion. oh it was a very but, heated debate. Yeah, yeah the award yeah. ceremony took a long. Well, it usually yeah. takes an hour, but it went a little over. The, yeah. So people know, um, and I think a lot of people will refer to this for next year's festival in 2014 or in 2015. Yeah. Um, there is a grand jury that sees every company. Mm -hmm. The grand jury votes on each of the awards, and it's a jury. So it's sort of like the Sundance Film Festival. Mm -hmm. We modeled it after, where. It's not voting, it's a discussion of who should win each award. And then we try to not have companies win more than one award. So if somebody wins best design, they're not gonna win best technology, they win best technology, they're not gonna win best business model. We try to spread the love around as such. Mm -hmm. But it was neck and neck between you and AdStage, um, mm -hmm. I think, which was another, I think they won best business. Yeah, they were a great company. And they were great. Yeah. And I think some people mm -hmm. might say, some people might have picked AdStage over you guys. Um, one, because one of them, I think, I think the handicapping, if I can recap it for you, which I really haven't talked about publicly, but I think the handicapping, and it was a close race, um, was ad stage probably is less risky because they're doing like a, a tool for ad buyers. It's less risky, but it's not going to get as big. Boxby's got a lot more risk, but it could become Uber-like, multi-billion dollar business, every city growing. So um, I think that... A lot of times in these events, going for the bigger moonshot is what people go for. And I think that's right. just, you know, advice for people. Go for a moonshot. <laughs> but it doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't mean both companies won't be tremendously successful and have great returns. And in fact, I'm investing in both. I can announce mm -hmm. that, right? Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, uh, the, the launch fund um, has been created. Um, and the social capital partnership and David Sachs are putting in $250,000 a year each. I'm putting in a hundred. So we'll have 600,000 to invest. We might have one or two more partners come in. So it could hit a million who knows, uh, but we're going to invest in uh, Boxby's uh, round and that's going to be fantastic. We get to yeah. keep working together. Very excited about Always that. Always sad to like the, the postpartum of the event leaving after the event. What, what was, <laughs> was it, was the event a peak and then you just shoot right down to a valley and have to get back to work or was it subsequent <laughs> peaks again? What was it like? The day after, the well, month you after. Are you talking about the event or my health? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You must have been exhausted after all that. My my body was like working really hard for that event, and then it said, "Okay, launch is over. I can give up now." The adrenaline had <laughs> yeah. just worn you out, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to give more credit to my team. Actually, oh, yeah. um, they they were working round the clock to have a live demo ready an hour before we went on stage. Um, yeah, you did it live. Yeah. Yeah, and you was... insisted on that. You didn't want to do anything canned. Yeah, I I just thought that would be really important because it's it's easy for people to look at Boxby and say like, no, that's too good to be true. Can it actually work? And right. I wanted to show people, no, you can try it right. today. It's open. Yeah. You know? um, and so you've done some tests and trials with it, and uh, or internally, and and what's the response been like? It's been great. Yeah. Um, we've. Yeah, we've we've been in business um, now. Like everything's working operationally. We've we've got hundreds of boxes in storage. Uh, people are really excited about in San Francisco. We have people all over the world emailing in on a daily basis. When are you going to start in our city? Wow. Australia, Netherlands, Incredible. <laughs> UK. Yeah. Now, is the one of the questions that came up is is this going to be a massive amount of infrastructure, mm -hmm. dr drivers to drop and pick stuff off and building storage facilities, but you had a really good answer for that. What is it? Yeah, well, we, we're we in a time now where collaborative consumption is, is really key and it's, it works and we're utilizing existing infrastructure right now. 
and we're taking advantage of the inefficiencies of um, you know under underutilized capacity in storage locations. Mm. So you're not going to have to build a big facility. You can just rent a portion of an existing facility as you go. Uh, that that's the strategy right now. Like who knows what the future will bring, but um, we we believe in a lean philosophy and starting up, starting out things in a quick, agile way uh, mm. instead of investing in massive capital expenditures. And what's the advantage and, of doing that agile, lean rollout? Well, as as a startup, uh, especially if you don't have funding, like we bootstrapped mm. a year before launch uh, began, it's it's important to watch watch your cash flow and not everything that you spend your money on will pay off, no matter how smart you are, no matter how, uh, how good of a predictor your advisors are, whatever, like you, you have to accept that some things won't work. And uh, not only is money a cost, but time is a cost. And mm -hmm. I don't know who said it, it might have been Paul Graham or, or, or someone said like the objective of a startup is not necessarily to make money. It is, but that's not the top goal. The, the, the main goal is to iterate as quickly as possible so you can get through the learning process so that you can move on to the next step. Right. Yeah. And what were the key learnings uh, for you with the product so far? What do you think you know, is going to be at the core of this business? What's going to make it successful? That's a, that's a big question. Uh, so there, there are a lot of components to that. Uh, one is trust. Mm. Uh, we, unlike um, most delivery services that are out there today who are delivering food or, or you know, papers or something, these are people's things. Mm. Whether they're monetarily valuable or not, they mean a lot to people. Sure. Uh, so having, uh, having trust in our branding, our marketing, our operations, having fail-safes at every possible corner is important for us. Ah, so yeah. trust, yeah. I mean, if, if my pizza gets delivered cold, the cost is... I'm a little perturbed. Mm -hmm. If you lose my photos, oh my, or my hard drive, boy, or it gets water damaged, that's going to be mm -hmm. a really you're going to get slammed on Yelp in the review section or something, right? <laughs> yeah. People are going to people will make a website against you. So, so how, how do you put trust into the corporate culture DNA? How, how do you how do you make that the fabric of the company? I mean, it's one thing um, to recognize that trust is an important issue. It's another thing to make it your DNA. That's really easy. You you recruit people that are absolutely passionate about Boxby. Mm -hmm. So that means they care, and if right. they care, they trust. Got it. It's like they, me they hiring trust. Brandis to do the show. She cares. <laughs> when the audio is off on the show, there's no, nobody who feels worse than Brandis. She's my first engineer <laughs> who was actually super crushed when the technical problem. She gets more crushed than I do. I just see her like staring at her shoes like, oh my God, this person showed up for the show with a, <laughs> with a pair of like bad headphones, and she's just, oh. <laughs> she takes out her samurai sword and shoves it in her gut like a seppuku. Um, so uh, you joined AngelPad, Thomas, um, and you're working with him. How's that been? Because he's got just such a great reputation for being a tireless supporter of entrepreneurs. Uh, nothing short of amazing. Uh, Thomas Corte and his, um, his partner, Karine, uh, have been absolutely amazing. As, as you've said, they've got quite a reputation here in the Valley, and I'm honored to be with them. Uh, unlike a lot of other incubators, they, they keep their class sizes really small so that... We had six, can, I think. Uh, I think it's 12. Oh, is it time, 12? Which yeah. is still really small right. um, yeah. compared to some of them out there. And they, they really dedicate a lot of time to the startups. Like we're talking to each other six, seven days a week. And mm. uh, they've, as you know, they've come up with some pretty successful companies like Postmates and Criticism and mm. uh, Pipedrive. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about building a big company with them. I'm pretty confident about where this can go. And well, how does AngelPad manifest itself as a product? Do you have office space and you're there every day with them? Do they do once a week like Y Combinator? Is it some combination? How, how does it actually work on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, great question. So we, um, yeah, we have an office location mm -hmm. with them uh, here in Soma. And we interact with them on a daily basis. There's, there's conference rooms. There's desk space. There's, um, uh, of course, they offer funding and, mm -hmm. and stipends, and um, they assist with the whole fundraising process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll be doing their demo day when? Is that a month from now or so? Uh, yeah, it's mid-May, I think on my birthday, actually. Wow. So, <laughs> hope awesome. that turns out well. Uh, what was yeah. it, May 17th? May, May 16th. 16th, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll be there rooting you on as uh, an investor <laughs> and as uh, somebody who's just got to see you really crush it. Now, are you a first-time okay. entrepreneur? Your uh, first in, time in the at... proper tech startup sense, yeah. yes, I've I've run a couple internet businesses and stuff. Ah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, how do you make sure you're doing it right? I mean, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, you, good question. you now have a lot <laughs> of expectation on you. You have a lot of pressure on you as the winner of the festival, as something the press absolutely went crazy for. You got a ton of press, as known as, mm -hmm. and consumer demand. I mean, how do you deal? And you're introverted, right? You, yeah. To your uh, and a lot of the great entrepreneurs are. H how do you maintain uh, composure with all this pressure now? Um, it, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's it's um, sometimes difficult to deal with, but I'm I'm thinking about it every moment of the day. Like I'm even dreaming about it, as <laughs> as most entrepreneurs do. Yeah. Uh, it's important to really take ownership of what you're doing. Uh, so that, that means you can't blame other people if something doesn't work. You can't blame your suppliers. Mm. You can't blame Heroku for, oh, I, I shouldn't mention any product names, but any app servers for, for being down. Yeah, <laughs> no, they to, all go down. I mean, I think yeah. that's fair. Heroku, EC2, they, yeah. they're all going to have downtime so, at some point. So if they do go down, Right. You, you can't say that my business fell because of that right. reason. <laughs> exactly. So, but the point is, like, as things grow, these things are happening on a daily basis, and and it's hard to deal with this sometimes. Um, and something that entrepreneurs have to remind themselves every day, and this is something I do every day when I wake up, is mm. I say I don't know what I don't know, and mm. today I'm going to find out what those like two more of those things. Mm. And I, if it takes going to other people, if it takes reading up on stuff, if right. it takes interviewing people, I don't I don't care what it takes. I need to learn what those things are. So to answer your question, like what do I have this pressure? And what do I need to do to, to make sure I keep going on this trajectory? I have to align myself with people who know more than I do, because ah. no one no one needs to reinvent the wheel everything that's like boxby it's looked at as this really original idea and i like to think it is but the components of it are not right and postmates has figured out some things yeah uber's figured out some things airbnb's figured out a lot of stuff in cloud right. consumption so you actually go out and seek out mentorship i've noticed that about you yes you're active in that way mm -hmm. i think it's critical i think so too it's interesting a lot of entrepreneurs don't do it mm -hmm. what do you think that is when, what, what do you think makes it easier for you to do that? Because I see some who are like, ah, eh, they, don't, they don't actually take the time to go ask somebody. Hey, I, I can speak from my personal experience yeah. and I'll, I'll admit it. Uh, there's a lot of pride in doing mm. things yourself. Right. And it's, sometimes it's hard to ask for help. You know, yeah. it's just uh, people either want to say that they did it themselves or they don't want to look like they're stupid mm. or they don't want to look inexperienced. Right. And I think you have to throw all those things out the window. Um, I've had a lot of personal experience with storage. I moved 22 times around the world growing up mm. and have used storage during those times. Wow. So I really understand the customer problem. Mm. But as far as, the, as far as the logistics side, the closest experience I've had to that has been a manufacturing background right. in semiconductors. Mm. So I don't, I don't come from that industry at all. And my first, my first uh, couple of months operationally with Boxby was... Uh, renting a zip van, driving around, picking up boxes, and doing really unglamorous you dog stuff. Dog food it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they yeah. see this six foot model come in. You were a male model at some uh, that's point. That's correct. <laughs> so the six foot model comes and says, Pardon me, ma'am, can I have your boxes? And it's like, okay. And yes. But you felt it was necessary to go door to door and, and experience that, but just it's get your absolutely. hands there. And it feels good, doesn't it, when you're actually doing. It feels terrible, actually. Really? <laughs> it feels uh, because there's sometimes it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work, and it ah. feels really risky, and you feel like you're you're venturing into the unknown, mm. and there's this this really tight feeling in your chest, like what am I doing? Like what's going to go wrong? What I, uh, I haven't yes, seen yes, these yes. customers before, and Got I'm it. just cold calling them or going right to their front door. I, I'm going to ask them all these questions. I feel like I'm taking something from them. Gotcha. I, I know I'm doing customer research, and it's all for the good. But there's that might but, be the introvert in you. I love that yes, stuff. <laughs> it's probably the introvert maybe but there's a lot of people like me mm. that have this problem and i just had to swallow it and say like look this is for the greater good yeah and it's uh if i do this i'm i'm ahead of the people who just go into google search and then think that they know all the answers because they they read, read a core question company. or a yeah. blog post right? right nothing like talking to those customers huh mm -hmm. um so you're going to be graduating you're obviously going to have a pretty easy time with the angel round um what, what do you think a year from now you're going to be able to say is true if you execute perfectly? Well, I'm about to make a big statement. Yeah. Uh, I was actually thinking about this really recently. Like, what, what are the big goals, the mm. big intermediate goals for Boxby? And I would like to be in two cities by the end of the year. Wow. Outside of San Francisco. Yeah. Two more in addition? Two more. Yeah. Wow. That is aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so that means you have to get the rollout system perfect yeah you have to figure out how to pop up a city perfectly yeah wow 
So we've, we've got the logistics in order right now, mm -hmm. and we're iterating through different marketing channels and everything. And then the, the end of the year is going to be about getting that, that rollout strategy right, and then mm -hmm. we're just going to dip the foot in. What are some of the clever, I mean, I think it's a great goal. Do you, is there a strategy for cities? Like, obviously, Los Angeles and New York have great density, mm -hmm. so that makes them perfect, but they also have very demanding customers and a lot of them. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a best practice right now that you've researched for, obviously, San Francisco is the perfect place to roll out because people here are willing to do anything technically. I mean, they'll try anything. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like the guinea pig nature of this crowd is amazing. But is there is there a a, a classic rollout plan that's emerging in the startup community? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. The the companies that have done it really well are obviously Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, they've they have uh, like they call it like a SEAL Team Six type yep. of group that they they deploy in these uh, cities in Europe and in uh, on the East Coast and they they've done it pretty well. So I think we would look to them for mm. for some guidance on that. Yeah. Well, I'll put yeah. you in touch with Travis. I'm obviously an investor in Uber, which is my most successful yeah. investment today. But this is going to be my most successful. I think you guys are going to be as do as well as Uber. Um, and so I wish you great success. Um, and I'm assuming with all this great success, you're going to hire people who have a passion um, for tr building trust and, and solving this problem for people, correct? Yes. Um, hiring has been, has been really interesting. Uh, in fact, I would say that investment and, and uh, some customers have, have come out of launch. Like that, that's been a really good part of launch. Mm. But the other part has been like people looking for jobs. Um, mm. Something uh, really interesting story I'd like to share is um, this woman in France okay. uh, heard about Boxby. She was watching the launch thing and she made an entire website dedicated to applying to Boxby. Wow. And I thought, I thought it was uh, like I, I tried to do some back URL searching to see yeah. if she did that with a bunch of companies and then right. I, I read through the text. Everything was handwritten Wow. and uh, it was really authentic. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so there amazing. were some people who were really enthusiastic about working with us. It's great. You know, like if you have that they're early true believers. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to worry about them caring. They're mm -hmm. going to just come to it with just a level of passion and care that is amazing. I mean, we have that actually at this week in startups and at uh, launch festival with DeMont, um, Jason DeMont, who is the CEO now. He used to run the sole meetup for this week in startups. <laughs> so I just met him for coffee one time and I was like, hey, he was in town and he had been running the soul meetup and he's like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to do next. I met with him. I was like, why don't you come work with me? And now he's the CEO of the company. That's really fortuitous. Yeah. yeah. Like you find your, 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 the fans of your product can become the best employees. Mm -hmm. um, well, listen, um, Christoph, I wish you the best success watching you improve the product week after week. It was just really awe inspiring. I think, I think you've got incredible potential. Um, to become a legendary entrepreneur, and I think the brand is—I think this is like the, this is like one of those things where I think it's like the first and the last brand you're going to make. I think this is it for you. I think you're going to just build this for 20 years. I think it's going to become a huge, huge, um, legendary brand like Uber is becoming, or Google, or Yahoo have already. Um, any other thoughts on the festival? Any messages for people who are listening to the program and saying, "Wow, you know, maybe I have an idea and I should try to get on that stage." How, how does somebody? become the next Boxby. What is your message to those people who are sitting on the bench wondering if they can do it? To the other models out there doing male modeling <laughs> on the runway. Who go, I want to do a startup instead of being a male model. No, what, what's you your, don't need what's to your do male modeling to, anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what's your message to those people? I would say get inspiration from what you love to do and think how you can make that really remarkable. Mm. And don't worry about what's hot and what's uh, don't don't try to make another better location-based app or a better food delivery thing or better. Those are really popular right now, um, but just making something better mm -hmm. isn't really going to cut it. Like think think about what are the think about the intersection between what are the real problems out there, mm -hmm. what are you passionately interested in, um, like what do you find yourself quote unquote wasting time on according to your boss ah. or when you're at home and your, your spouse or your girlfriend says like uh, why, why are you doing this you should be doing that instead like I, I don't view that as wasting time you're on to something like trust your intuition ah. trust what what's just calling to you because there's something there hmm. so you make a vector between what you're wasting time on what you're <laughs> in other words what yeah. you're just natively interested in what you're inherently passionate about mm -hmm. and it, a good signal is somebody says you're wasting time on it and then what are the problems in that space 
Yes. What are the big problems or how could it be improved? Mm -hmm. it, and that it, to me sounds like such a good strategy because ev everything can be improved, mm -hmm. right? There's so little that we've done perfectly. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I was eating a hamburger the other day at this place, uh, Mayfair, I think it was called here in San Francisco. And I was like, my God, they've improved the hamburger. It's just so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the hamburger's been around for a while. <laughs> um, so find and look for the problems in the space that you're passionate about because if, as Mark Cuban said in that same um, uh, vein, if things go bad and or things become hard, not they go bad, but they become hard, at least you're passionate about it. So it makes it easier to get up every day and mm -hmm. get in there and fight the war and be resilient. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's very wise advice. Um, if you're looking to work at Boxby, uh, you know what to do. Build a website uh, with a great domain name <laughs> like I love Boxy or I think Boxy's awesome or I think this is such a great idea for people. Like everybody complains like, oh, I can't find a job or whatever, but they show no passion on the way in. They show no chutzpah, they, you know? It's mm -hmm. like that woman, w next time you're in Paris, you're gonna get coffee with her. That's like <laughs> on, in your top five things to do, right? It's like the Louvre, La Durée, Meet with and this meet crazy the, woman. Meet the crazy woman, yeah. Who's just absolutely, because you know what? The crazy ones are the people who change things. Mm -hmm. Take her to La Dure and then go eat macaroons in the Louvre. Great idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you, uh, like I said, uh, this is a great company. I'm uh, incredibly biased because I, I fell in love with the idea and obviously, you know, uh, I'm going to be an investor in it. I'm so proud to be aff affiliated with it. And boxb.com you can sign up with your email address now right so if you want yes. to become one of the early pioneers of it and if you are passionate about this idea and you make sure hey brandis that we link um to early on uh in the uh, youtube to the boxby launch a demo just very clear i mean you can type boxby and launch into youtube i bet you you'll find the video but let's make sure we do an annotation uh early in the video uh, and right now um if you're watching the youtube video to see him launch on stage it was really great and um Get involved in this startup because I think it's going to be really great. It's going to be transformative, and I think it's going to help people a lot, especially you, just, you notice this trend of people talking about micro apartments. Yes, they're building a couple of few blocks from here. I think this it's is great. such a great idea. I mean, it really plays into what you're doing, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. There's got to be some affiliation you can have with those folks, like... Because yeah, we're we're changing we're we're changing the concept of ownership mm -hmm. to that of access. I mean, this is the way the sharing economy is going right now. People don't need to own a lot of stuff and just collect it and hoard it. Uh, yeah. we're, because we're basically becoming a stuff management platform, we'll enable people to share their, their power drill that they only use for... Right. Then my friend asks if he can use the power drill, and I take out my iPhone and I ship box number seven to their house? Yeah, you just send it to them or share it with them. It's not implemented yet. We're, ah. we're still developing it. Um, oh, so I could share yeah. that box so they could, cl they could pull it out anytime they want to return it? Yeah. Oh my God, that is such a brilliant idea. I didn't even so, think so of that. So for micro apartments, you know, you only have probably half this room that we're in to, mm. to, to live in. Yeah. And uh, it, it's necessary to be able to access stuff and not just own and hoard things. Got it. Yeah. Right. So if I had a bunch of scuba equipment or golf clubs and any of my friends on Facebook could then borrow my golf clubs as long as they return them. That's See, right. I think that this is going to be incredible for, just think about how much money people are going to save and how they could redeploy that capital you know, just a bicycle, whatever, any of this stuff could be loaned out and dropped off because dropping off your golf clubs might cost $25 or something, but, or picking them up, I guess, or whatever. It's a lot less than renting them. Wow, such a good idea. Very true. Wow, you're blowing my mind again. I, I didn't even think about that. You can actually share the boxes and inventory with folks. So brilliant. This idea is going to change everything. Um, Continued success, and thank you to my sponsors on the program, my partners on the program. I don't know who they were because I didn't read the ads here live, but uh, I, it's probably going to be somebody great like ShareFile or um, GoToMeeting, or it could be Sangrid, or it could be New Relic, or it could be uh, Hiscox, it could be MailChimp, it could be... God, so many great sponsors on the program. I can't even remember all of them. Could be the Resumator who just joined. I love all of the partners on the program for making This Week in Startups possible and for giving me the opportunity to have these great conversations with entrepreneurs each week. Please go to thisweekinstartups.com. Please type thisweekinstartups.com into um, YouTube and subscribe and follow TWI Startups. And of course, I'm at Jason, just at Jason. That's me showing off my Twitter handle, just at Jason, J-A-S-O-N on Twitter. Follow me. Tell me what you thought of the program, who you want as a guest. Christoph, we'll see you next time. Thank you for having me. Cheers, everybody. Bye.
Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Turnstone. More than furniture, we're an experience. Go to myturnstone.com slash twist to learn more and receive 10% off your first order. And by ShareFile from Citrix. Secure file transfer built for business. Visit sharefile.com, click on the microphone, and enter twist for a free 30-day trial. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Today on This Week in Startups, the winner of the Launch Festival in 2013 is here. Uh, Christoph Matthews, the founder of Boxby. We're going to find out how he came. 